So in today's video, we're going to get the Fiat ready for the engine to be installed. The engine that we are installing is a 2002 engine. So we're going to get the engine into the car and hopefully we will have it running before the end of this video. Without further ado, let's get to work. A few of the modifications that we've done here include just opening up the exhaust port. Uh, it's not as big as the 06 head. But this is the 05 and earlier head. We were able to open this up about 25%. Uh, what we didn't want to get do is get too close to this area because we know that there's an opening behind this part of the casting. In addition to that, we opened up, there's a air injection port that comes to this. This is where a solenoid sits, not on all cars. On this one, it had a factory block off plate. But we know that this passage goes through and into the exhaust system and right here my fingers on the end of this port and since these three are connected and they all come to a reduced section of the uh, porting in here we made this plug to stick in this hole so that we can drive the thing in and block off all three ports we'll follow this up with a quick weld around here just to seal it off, it won't be so hot that we would worry about having the exhaust valve seats drop out, but we want to have this sealed up so we don't have to worry about it at a later date. After this, we're going to tap this hole. Uh, this is where the factory front sump oil dipstick tube went. And while the oil pans off, we're just going to run the uh, uh, pipe thread tap into it to uh, allow us to put a plug in there. And then on this side of the block, we're going to open up this web right here. The oil pan that gets modified uh, is a five-cylinder oil pan, which has a rear sump. The six-cylinder has a front sump. So what we'll do is we'll clearance this area so that the new dipstick hole can go into the five-cylinder sump. Cool. So, yeah, I'll just have Calvin pump that all up. That'll be good. So these two plugs got seal welded, and while the engine's out, to minimize the challenge of breaking all these parts loose, we took these two plugs out. This will be the feed going in. This will feed the turbo. We also took out the water. Uh, heater core and we're gonna modify that that'll actually be the return so the uh, heater core supply on the other side of the engine that sees the uh, water coming from the water pump will go to the water cold turbo and then come back to this point at the same time that all this is going on Calvin machined up these two plugs those replaced the originals because they needed to be longer to get through the adapter plate and to um, allow engagement into the transmission. And right now he's getting ready to drill and tap the girdle so that the modified pickup tube can be bolted in before the oil pan goes on.
The wiring is almost completely done on the Fiat. The keen-eyed viewers will notice that the factory ECU is still on the intake. And that's because we are going to run the factory ECU. Additionally, we are running a MicroSquirt ECU, which you can see buried down there. So, um, the reason we're doing this is we need to control the VBT. So the MicroSquirt does not support closed-loop control of the VVT, which is required on these engines, as we have found out on other builds. So we are retaining the factory ECU. We are giving it enough inputs that it thinks everything's cool, and it will open and close the throttle body and control the VVT. And then the spark and fuel will be controlled by the MicroSquirt. So, also, you'll notice that there are two map sensors on the vehicle. One is the factory one bar, which goes to the factory ECU, and the other is a three bar, which goes to the micro squirt. So, the micro squirt needs the three bar um, map sensor so that it can vary spark and fuel as boost increases. And as far as the factory ECU knows, it's going to run off the end of the fuel table and it's going to do whatever it's going to do. Hopefully it doesn't get upset at us. As we found out in Richard Holdner's videos, in a naturally aspirated form, the VVT control can, could literally just be a switch, meaning that you could command all 25 degrees of exhaust cam retard and it doesn't really uh, increase or decrease power over the rev range. You know, I, I think it was around 2500 RPM. Just command all 25 degrees and it'll put it where it needs to be to make optimal power. The only concern I would have with that is the shock to the system. You know, you're commanding 25 degrees of exhaust cam change, which is going to greatly impact the uh, airflow of the engine and could cause it to, you know, kind of hesitate a little bit when it comes in. The mechanical delay of the, the system, you know, just the oil pressure and all the cavities filling up may provide a smooth enough transition that it would be okay, but that would be my only concern there. The only thing that he didn't really talk about in his video when he started putting boost to um, the engine was did it like a different angle. I think he may have said that it still liked the same angle, but the thing is, one, he wasn't running very much boost, and two, he was running a GT45. So a GT45, they are notoriously uh, compressor limited, meaning you will reach the limits of compressor flow before you will reach the limits of the exhaust flow. Therefore, your back pressure ratio is always going to be in a favorable spot to behave more like a naturally aspirated type engine, meaning the back pressure here is going to be equal to or lower than the amount of boost that's being produced. So the, the delta pressure across the two is going to be relatively constant, much like a naturally aspirated engine. In this particular combo, we have a very small turbo. It's a GT3582. Instead of the 77 millimeter turbine, it has a 62 millimeter turbine. Therefore, and what has been found with these turbos is the compressor will outflow the exhaust much sooner um, than like a GT45. So we're in a case where we're going to see more back pressure in the exhaust than we are going to see boost pressure. 
And therefore, we may find that the variable valve timing needs to be in a less retarded position than maybe what it likes naturally aspirated. And that's just because that back pressure, you know, as you are retarding the exhaust cam, you are adding overlap, meaning the intake valve and the exhaust valve are open at the same time. And if your back pressure in your exhaust is high enough, it may fight the intake as it's coming in and the exhaust valve is closing. We wanted to make sure that we had good closed loop control of the VBT so that we can suss that all out and figure out what the optimal cam angle is. So uh, let's get back to work. ECUs looking at it at the same time. I can see RPM on both ECUs. <laughs> Alright, we got a lot done in this episode. The car runs, the car drives, and overall it's working well so far. Got to figure out um, some little issues with, uh, it went into limp mode when I uh, got into the throttle and the one pull. I'm sure there's some limit or threshold that I need to get out of the way and it'll stop doing that. But overall, very happy with the car. Um, it runs well, it definitely is making power already. Next episode, you will see this car on the dyno and we're gonna figure out what kind of VVT numbers it likes with the smaller turbine. Make sure you go down and uh, subscribe, maybe ring the bell, leave a comment, like, all those great things, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.